Hello everyone, this is Mike and welcome back to the channel. In today's video, we're going to have a look at how to create a Windows 11 VM and fixing uh, the uh, this PC can't run Windows 11 error message if you are kind of like me and when you're building stuff that you don't really know about yet, uh, you take the defaults for everything. So I've uh, started uh, learning Windows 11 because a lot of the classes that I teach are now starting to incorporate it into it. Um, and I was uh, just recently uh, downloaded the, uh, the media kit uh, for the Windows Business Editions and discovered a little, uh, little foible that was getting to me uh, when I was creating a VM for Windows 11. So I figured I'd share the process with all of you. Uh, so we're going to have a look at uh, obviously creating the Windows 11 VM. Um, and specifically, I'm looking to make this for a test network. So I don't want it to, um, uh, to have to sign in uh, to a Microsoft account, uh, because in all, uh, in, in all honesty, this might just be isolated in its own test network. I might not even let it connect to the internet after setup is done. Uh, so we'll have a look at that. Uh, dealing with the, the errors that might pop up along the way. So I'll show you what those are all about. And finally, uh, finishing the setup process and uh, bypassing that uh, sign in with a Microsoft account screen uh, in case you don't want to use that. You know, if you want to deploy Windows 11, you don't necessarily want to create or sign in to each of these uh, test computers with your Microsoft account. Right. So let's uh, let's switch over to um, my Hyper-V console here. And, uh, and go ahead and set up a VM. So ahead of time, I had, uh, like I mentioned, I had downloaded uh, Windows 11 uh, from my, um, my subscription that I get all of my licensing from. So I have an ISO for that. And it is build uh, 22H2. Uh, and again, the business class versions of this, of which I'll probably be installing Enterprise out of that. All right. So let's go ahead and, uh, and make a VM. So we could right click and select new virtual machine. Uh, we want to pick where we want to, uh, you know, what we want to do with this. So we'll go ahead, hit next. Uh, let's maybe call this uh, uh, maybe a demo one, just for lack of anything else here. Uh, store it in the directory here that I keep all of my VMs in. So we'll make a folder here called demo one, place it in there. Uh, we're going to do Gen 2 hardware, because uh, I do want to emulate uh, a lot of the components that are already on the, uh, the physical hardware that I'm using. Uh, let's see. So memory, um, I'll probably start off with, um, let's maybe do uh, 4 gig, uh, just because that is uh, the minimum uh, for Windows 11. Uh, if you are doing an install, it does want uh, secure boot, it does want TPM uh, chip, it does want uh, at least two cores, and it does want four gig of RAM. Uh, now, I normally always clear out the used dynamic memory. Um, I find that uh, with dynamic memory, basically what happens is when the, when the VM's not active, it tends to take memory away from it. And when it does get active again, it kind of gives that memory back. Uh, what I find in my, again, just playing around with test networks, not talking production here, but in test networks, I find it's not quick enough. You know, if you want to do something on a VM for like, uh, you know, 30 seconds or something, dynamic memory is not going to give you that RAM back. Uh, so normally I clear it out. Uh, but again, you know, it's uh, your, your, uh, your experience may vary. Uh, so I'll connect it to uh, the virtual switch that I have connected to the actual NIC on this computer here that I'm recording this video on. Uh, we'll let it create a uh, virtual hard disk here. I'll let it just pick demo one VHDX and I'm fine with a dynamically expanding disk. Uh, I will install the operating system now. Okay, I do have uh, the files for that. So let's go find my uh, C drive here. ISO and go find Windows 11 right there. All right, and we'll go ahead and finish. Okay, so now I have this VM um, and I'm going to go ahead and uh, start it up. 
So I can right click here and select start uh, and connect to it. All right, and we're gonna, oh, probably missed my prompt here, my bad. Let me start that again. So I can press any key to boot off the, the CD. Okay, and if you've ever done a Windows setup before, um, all the way back to maybe like Vista, I think use the same menu system here, uh, this is probably going to be familiar. So we're going to hit Next, Install. And again, this is typically what I do when I and working with, let's say, something new. I'm just kind of following the defaults of basically what I've done before. So in this case, I'll pick maybe like Windows 11 Enterprise, as I said I want to install, um, and then I get to here. Okay? So this is the dreaded, uh, this PC can't run Windows 11. Okay, so something doesn't meet the minimum requirements. Okay. Um, so that may be something we want to investigate. Okay? So if we, yeah, if we have a look at it here, um, all right, so they give you it doesn't meet the minimum system requirements. For more information, visit uh, here, and away we go. All right? So that means uh, we can't do anything at the moment here. So let's go ahead and um, turn off the VM and maybe go look at some settings on it. Okay, so as I mentioned with uh, the minimum requirements, um, it did need four gig of RAM, so I got got it that. Um, if you just take the defaults when you're making a VM, you only get one core. Okay, so that's probably the first place where people uh, mess up here, me included. You know, if you just take the defaults, uh, so I'll kind of bump that number. So again, you know, if you notice here, see how it's um, it's set to one. Uh, virtual processor, we want to up that number to whatever is appropriate, right? Uh, keeping in mind that obviously the host that you're running this on, the Hyper-V host, needs enough spare to be able to do this. Uh, so I'll bump that up to two as a minimum. And the other uh, required components here, if I go under the security tab, uh, secure boot was enabled, so we had that. Um, however, the Enable Trusted Platform module uh, was not uh, checked off by default, so we would need to do that. So we'll check that off as well. Um, and again, this is kind of assuming that the host computer has a, uh, has a TPM on it as well for kind of that, that emulation, if you will. So in which case, mine, mine does. So I'm going to hit OK. Um, and now we're going to try this again. So I gave it uh, another processor core, so I have two. I made sure secure boot was enabled and make sure uh, t uh, it's going to emulate that there's a TPM chip there now as well. So that should meet the minimum requirements. Okay, so we'll go ahead and start that up. Okay, and this is, uh, this is most likely going to work, but let's say it did. Um, so what if, you know, what if uh, we didn't have uh, the 4 gig of RAM to give it? What if we didn't have the two process, you know, what if we didn't have stuff to meet the, the minimum requirements here? Uh, if you don't have that, while you're in the setup, uh, you could basically enable a bunch of bypass checks. Uh, you can bypass the RAM, you could bypass Secure Boot, you could bypass TPM. Okay, so... How you basically go about doing it is within the setup here, uh, you have to modify the registry of like this WinPE boot image, if you will. Um, so what you do on that is you hit uh, shift, when it comes up to this screen here, you can do shift F10, um, and that will pop up a command prompt. Um, so it's uh, doing shift F10, that's a, a trick that's been around in the WinPE uh, boot setups here uh, for quite a while. So in there you could then type regedit, uh, access the registry, and explore down into HKey local machine, uh, system, and setup. Okay, so within here what you're looking to do, if you notice there's, there's a few keys underneath there, allow start, PID, and, and setup CL, uh, you're going to make another key in there. All right, so the key is going to be called a lab config, uh, one word. Okay, there's no spaces or anything in the registry. Uh, in lab, so you're going to make lab config. 
And then in there, uh, depending on which things you want to bypass, which checks you want to bypass, uh, you could come in here and add a D word value. And the first one you would do, uh, if you were interested, was uh, bypass TPM check. Okay, so bypass TPM check. And you're going to set that to a value of 1. Okay, uh, next uh, D word value would be bypass uh, secure boot check. Bit. Uh, so bypass secure boot check, set that to a value of 1. And the last one, uh, again, if you wanted to bypass this, uh, would be bypass RAM check, and again, setting that to a value of 1. Okay, so those would be the three bypasses. Get that squared there. Uh, TPM check, secure boot check, and RAM check. Uh, that may be pre preventing you from installing uh, Windows 11. Okay, so I don't need those in this case because I was able to meet these requirements. Uh, so I'm just going to go ahead and delete uh, this key out. Okay, but figured I'd, I'd show it for everybody in case you wanted to pursue that. Okay, so so then you would leave those keys in there. Obviously, close regedit close the command prompt, and then just continue on with your setup, right? Now, for me, um, I didn't need those because I meet the, uh, the minimum requirements now. So notice if I come in here uh, and start off with the install, that everything is going to run um, hunky-dory here now. So select Windows 11 Enterprise, um, and that will then get me onto the next part here. All right, so we can see, except the Microsoft license agreement. I'm not doing an in-place upgrade here, so I'm just going to do the custom. I'll let it install, uh, basically let it partition its uh, the C drive that it's going to be using, um, and away we go. All right now, there's one more thing that I wanted to show, and this is going to be in the out-of-box experience phase of the setup. Um, I wanted to show all of you how to uh, bypass if you don't have a Microsoft account to sign in with or if you just don't want to, uh, because not everybody's going to be interested in that. Okay, so I'm going to pause the video for a moment and I'll dive back in when we get to that part. Okay, so it's been about, uh, I don't know, I wasn't keeping track of the clock here, maybe about four or five minutes. Uh, that this was doing its install. So we are now at the out-of-box experience phase. Uh, so, or OOBE, uh, if that's what you more refer to. So this is after the uh, uh, the copying of the files or the laying down of the WIM image that's on the DVD. Uh, one reboot, uh, setting itself up, another reboot, and then we come up to this. So I happen to be in the United States, so I'm gonna pick that. I'm in uh, using a US keyboard layout, so I will pick that. Uh, do I want to add a second? No, I don't in this case. All right, we've got the good old checking for updates, which hopefully shouldn't take that long. It's, uh, it says 22H2. It came out pretty recent. Okay, and here's the uh, here's the dreaded spot where it's uh, uh, sign in with a uh, with a Microsoft account. So this could be an Azure Active Directory account. This could be a freebie um, like Microsoft Online account, like a hot you know Hotmail, Outlook, something like that account. Um, and you cannot bypass through it, right? So enter a valid email address. Okay, great. Um, there is sign in with a secure key, but again, I don't want to set that up. This is kind of, you know, looking to make a, uh, you know, a, a VM for like a test network. Uh, so if you go to sign in options, uh, they do list the, the sign in with a secure key, but believe it or not, the one you want is domain join. Right? So even if you don't plan on joining the, this computer to a domain, you're just going to leave it in a work group. It's still the option that you want. Uh, because that allows me past that. Um, so I don't need to create the sign in here. 
So basically, if I want to create just a local account, um, it still kind of prompts you. Like, notice here, even better, use an online account. Well, I don't really want to do that. So I want to make a local user called Mike. Uh, if I want to set an account on this, or a password on this, I guess I should say. Uh, so I'll you know, throw a password in there, let's say. Um, throw the same password in there again. Okay. Um, answer a few security questions. So what's my uh, what's my pet's name? Um, you know, so you run through the uh, the three questions here, and then uh, that'll get you uh, that'll get you done with your uh, with your setup here. So if you don't want to do the uh, the online account, uh, this is basically the bypass. You're basically picking the option to to domain join, but you're not actually uh, joining the domain. So once you answer your security questions, and again, I don't know what's going to be appropriate for everybody here. Uh, I usually, out of this one, I think I do my, my pet's first name, um, uh, the name of my oldest cousin, and the name of the school that I attended. All right, so for the purposes of the video, I don't want to share those with anybody. Uh, in case some of you, uh, you know, might want to try and, and, and uh, use my answers. Uh, so I'm just going to leave it here. You answer the security questions, um, and then go from there. All right. So, uh, so any questions, comments, uh, feel free to leave a uh, something down in the chat. And if not, we'll uh, we'll see you in the in another video. So have a good one, everybody.